Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Umbrella Academy Season 4. At the end of Season 3, our dysfunctional super siblings saved the world from yet another apocalypse. Although really, it was their adopted father, Sir Reginald Hargreaves, who saved the world. He tricked them into activating the Universal Control Room that sucked up their powers and rebooted the universe. And Sir Reginald designed this world to be his own perfect timeline where his dead wife is still alive. Now it's a six-year time jump as our powerless Umbrella Academy has found new jobs. It's Diego and Lila's kid's birthday party, which is an excuse for our siblings to get together for the first time in a while. None of them are especially happy. Diego's kind of bored with his mundane normal life. Luther would love to have a family, but his wife Sloane from last season doesn't exist in this timeline. Allison, remember, made a deal with their father to get her own dream life with her daughter and her husband from the 60s, Ray. But it didn't last. Ray left her, and her daughter's a teenager now. And Allison's not a movie star anymore. Her biggest gig is a laundry detergent commercial. Klaus is living in Allison's basement. No wild adventures, he's three years sober. And without his powers making him immortal, he's overly cautious now. Victor, at least, is doing well. He's running a bar up in Canada. But Victor doesn't make it to the birthday party because David Cross shows up and kidnaps him. But this was just to get the siblings' attention. He needs help from the Umbrella Academy. His daughter disappeared after joining a cult that believes they're living in the wrong timeline. Five has already heard of this cult. He's working for the CIA and has been undercover investigating them. It's led by a quirky married couple, Jean and Jean, who have been investigating the timeline discrepancies, calling it the Umbrella Effect. So Five takes the case, partially because in this box is the glowing goop that gave them their powers. They could get their powers back, but most of the gang thinks they're better without them. Ben disagrees, and so he sneakily spikes their sake, and the next morning, like it or not, they're super again. So the Umbrella Academy reassembles for their first mission in six years. But the radio in Diego's van is stuck on Baby Shark, and they're all feeling sick from getting their powers back, so it's a pretty bad road trip. They eventually make it to this cute little town, which doesn't seem very suspicious. Until everyone in the town freezes and pulls out guns. Yes, it's the classic, everyone in town was fake. They use their new powers to fight off these goons and discover they're not from the cult. They work for their father, Sir Reginald Argreaves. Ben had found the missing girl Jennifer, but she's not missing and David Cross is not her father. But now she discovers her whole life is fake, all set up to protect her. She decides to run away with Ben, but on their way out of town, boom, epic car crash. Yes, they were caught by Jean and Jean, who want Jennifer for their own plan. They believe she is the key to fixing the timeline in an event called The Cleanse. Yes, no one knows where Jennifer came from. She was found inside a giant squid. The Umbrella Academy has hit a dead end, and Klaus, in fact, ended up dead. He didn't get his powers back. He's sober. He didn't drink the sake. So to save him, they give him the goop, and yeah, Klaus is back to life. But that's not what he wanted. He hates his powers, and so he runs off to go on a bender. It's time for the siblings to visit their father, Sir Reginald Hargreaves. And turns out his wife is a very nice person who's able to get him on his best behavior. They learn about the Jennifer incident, which was the mission where their original Ben died. It's always been a mystery how Ben died, and now that the siblings try to talk about it, they realize none of them actually remember. Their father must have wiped their memory to cover it up. And while this is a different Sir Reginald, he admits that sounds like something he'd do. Conveniently, in his basement, he has a mind wipe machine to unlock their memory of that night. They were told to destroy this tank without looking inside, but Ben opened it up and found Jennifer. Ben rescued her, but they were both immediately killed by Sir Reginald. The siblings are pretty upset, but their father explains it had to be done. That saved the world. The glowing goop that gives them their powers is called Marigold, and in fact, Sir Reginald's wife invented it. But Jennifer somehow has the opposite particles, and if they ever connect, it'll destroy the whole universe. That night, Jean and Jean are distracted having a quirky dance party while Ben busts in and rescues Jennifer. And they don't know why, but they feel an immediate connection, and so these two get it on which unfortunately will end up destroying the world. The Umbrella Academy is tracking them down, but Lila pulls Five aside like, hey, we're time travel experts, let's just go take care of this. Five gets a favor from his CIA boss to babysit his dumb brothers, and he pretends to make them honorary agents. But Luther discovers he's in the cult, and so Luther gets his own Captain America elevator fight. But Luther is wearing his stripper suit, and he lent one to Diego too, so the brothers have a CIA fight with their clothes getting ripped off. Klaus, meanwhile, has a wacky adventure where he becomes a ghost medium prostitute, but it gets pretty heavy when he realizes he's a prisoner. He manages to escape and goes to dig up the gangster's cash, but he's caught and buried alive, but Allison rescues him, so it's all good. Now, Lila and Five try to time travel, but they end up in this weird subway, which they realize doesn't travel through time, but across timelines. They take the train one stop over and find an apocalypse. The apocalypse, in fact, where Five lived for all those years. On the way back, their train blows right past their original stop. They accidentally got on the express, and now they're lost in the depths of this insane subway labyrinth. 
They try to find their way back home, but years go by. It's a cool montage as these two live a whole adventure with only each other for company. Five and Lila become quite close. Eventually, they take a break from searching and settle down in a nice timeline where, yes, indeed, Five and Lila fall in love. But eventually, Five discovers a notebook with the map to get back home. Five would like to not go back. Let's live here happily ever after. And it's tragic as Lila's like, hey, I love you, but I gotta get back to my real life. So the whole family comes over for Christmas. They agree to not say anything. What happens in the multiversal subway stays in the multiversal subway. But Diego can tell they're acting weird, and pretty soon the whole sordid tale comes out. Classic family Christmas drama. But now back to the main plot. Ben and Jennifer realize something is very wrong. David Cross visits Jean and Jean and tells them Ben and Jennifer's location. Jean with the G doesn't trust this guy, and he's right, cause he's stabbed with an alien hand. Yes, it's Sir Reginald's alien wife carrying out her own secret plan. So she and Jean put out the call for all their followers to arm up and protect Ben and Jennifer. It's time to start the cleanse. But Jean with the J knows her husband too well and knows this is an imposter. And so it's Katana time. Wow, takes her out. The Umbrella Academy bust in to save the day where Ben and Jennifer are starting to turn into gross blob monsters. And it's too late. They fuse into an unstoppable mega blob. The Umbrella Academy's best powers don't do nothing. And so it's apocalypse time again. Five decides to just peace out. But now in the subway, he finds a diner filled with his alternate selves. Every single one of their timelines ends with an apocalypse. They've discovered there's no way to fix it because their siblings' existence is the problem. The timeline was fractured when alien Sir Reginald released the Mary Gold to Earth to start this whole plan to resurrect his dead wife. Now his wife talks to him, Darling Reggie, it was really sweet of you to do all this for me. But you realize in bringing me back, you've doomed the entire multiverse. She decided to start this apocalypse too to bring everything back to normal. And Sir Reginald accepts maybe he was a little bit selfish, and so these two settle in to face oblivion together. So Five goes back and fills in his siblings. Good news, our timeline holds the key to saving the multiverse. Bad news, we have to erase ourselves. They talk it out with some classic endearing sibling bickering, but in the end decide to do it. It's a tearful farewell as all our siblings work out their issues and say goodbye one last time. The Ben Jennifer Blob busts in to absorb them and reacting with their marigold particles doesn't kill them but erases them and resets the timeline. And it is a happy one, where a lot of the time travel assassins we've met are living out nice normal lives. By sacrificing themselves, the Umbrella Academy stopped the apocalypse for good this time. And that's where the Umbrella Academy comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.